Factory scoreboard training. In this video, we're going to cover how to set up the machine, some basic operations, and some more advanced features if you really want to show off. We'll also be discussing some tips and tricks to make sure that everything runs smoothly during the game. Let's go take a look. The two cables that run out of the back of the machine plug in over here, and this is what distributes power and information to the boards on either side of the gymnasium. After you have everything plugged in, the power switch is located here on the right side of the machine. When you first turn on the machine, it's going to ask if you want to start where it was turned off last. Press yes. One of your best friends while operating the scoreboard is going to be this, your hand controller, which conveniently plugs in either on the left side or the right side of the machine. Today, I'm going to go lefty. Before we get started, let's take a quick look at some of the buttons we'll be using most. Probably the most important button is going to be set. You're going to push this before every other button to get everything set up at the beginning. The next is time, home score, guest score, home team fouls, and guest team fouls. The first thing we're going to want to do at the start of the game is set the timer. So we're going to push set, time, Let's say we want to have an eight minute quarter. We're going to push zero, eight, zero, zero, zero. Yes. And first period, yes. You're also going to use the set button to set the score to zero at the beginning of the game. First you'll press set, home score, zero, and then set, guest score, zero. Once the game starts, you'll control the clock using the hand switch by toggling the switch on and off. There's also a button that can be used to sound the horn. When the team scores, the two buttons in the bottom right corner will help you add the score to the scoreboard. If the home team scores, you're going to press the home score button and then the number of whatever points they just made. Let's say two. guest score, let's say they hit a three-pointer. We're going to hit guest score, three, yes. Team fouls are added the same way. On the bottom left, we have home team fouls and guest team fouls. So if the home team gets a foul, we add one. If the home team fouls again, we add another one. If you need to correct a mistake for either scoring or fouls, you start by pressing the set button and then the button of the information that you need to correct. So let's say, for example, the guest didn't hit a three-pointer, it was only a two. We're gonna push set, guest score, two. If we made a mistake and the home team didn't foul, set, home team, zero. To start the next quarter, we need to set the time again. This time it'll be period two. Once a team has the correct number of fouls to be in bonus, all we have to do is push the bonus button, and it'll cycle through all the options, home, away, and both. Once you become comfortable with setting the score and keeping track of fouls and running the clock, the next thing you can do is keep track of individual player fouls. So the first thing you want to do is add to the team foul. Then you can press the home player number, enter their number, and the number of fouls that they have. If you just do the home player number and their foul count, it doesn't change the team foul count. So you still have to go in and add one to their total fouls. To use the timeout timer, all we do is press start and then choose either zero or one Zero is for a 30 second timeout. One is for a full minute timeout. So let's just press one. Right now, everything is set up so that the timeout timer will be displayed on the scoreboard. If the settings on the machine are reset in between uses, that setting will clear and the timers will not be saved. When you're ready to clear the player number and foul count, all we do is press set, home player, and then reset yes. 
and that will clear that slot. Set home team foul zero, set guest team foul zero, set home score zero, set guest score zero, set time to eight minutes, back to the first period, and now you're ready for the next game. The most important thing to keep your eye on during the game is the referee. The referee will signal when to start time by waving his hand down, and he'll signal when to stop the time with a whistle. When the machine is first turned on and asks if you want to keep the previously used settings, if you push no, you'll have to do a little extra work. When it asks you for a model code, the code for basketball is 134, which is on the machine itself. Continuing that theme, if the machine settings are reset, all of the presets will be reset as well, including the timeout timers. If you want to reset it, all you have to do is press set, timeout timer start, and then zero or one, and then follow the on-screen display to finish setting it. Remember that scoring and foul counts are both additive, so after you press the button of whatever it is you need to increase, you just have to add one, two, or three to that number. If at any point you get lost during the game, like you miss points or something like that, focus on keeping the clock accurate first and foremost. The bookkeeper should be sitting next to you and they can help you sort out any discrepancies in scores or foul counts whenever there's a break in the game. Thank you for watching, but more importantly, thank you for volunteering for this job. I hope this video has helped you feel more comfortable operating the scoreboard. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'll put my info at the bottom of the screen. Take care, and God bless.